Hi, everyone. Welcome aboard. Um, so this is the spring open house. And uh, for those of you who are here or watching on the recording, um, we hope to share with you a little bit of what we've done so far this year uh, in all our classes and um, to talk a little bit about what's coming up ahead. And then uh, towards the very end, uh, some uh, little bit of logistics and registration and scheduling and all that kind of stuff and answer some questions about all that. Um, but first, oh, oh, um, I'd love to hear if you either want to, you know, put something in the chat or just vocally, what, what are you especially hoping to learn from tonight? Uh, is there anything you're especially, it's like, I've got a question on my noodle and, um, you know, it would be great if, if, if it was gotten to. Um, and so if you, if you have something, you know, put in the chat and we will make sure to to bring it up at some point. So that can be something you're thinking about. And while you're doing that, um, let's do some quick introductions. Um, and and then uh, I'll go first, because I got the mic. And my name is Luke, uh, Luke Travers. And next year will be the 10th year of literature at our house. I know, Tonya, like, OMG emoji. Uh, OMG emoji? That, that's funny. I never thought about that before. So yes, uh, 10th anniversary. Um, I don't know, what, what do you do on your 10th anniversary? I ha I've not been married, so I don't know if, what happens. Um, but uh, so yes, excited about the, the new year. Uh, and, um, and many of you know, I do art tours and stuff and, um, and just I'm, I'm finishing up uh, an art book that I'll be selling soon. So I will definitely be sharing all that news because I think it's something that's inspired by all my classes, art appreciation and literature classes with my students, and maybe something that uh, families will enjoy too. So I'll be sharing about that um, in the near future. Okay, that's enough from me. Rachel, you wanna go next? Sure. Um, my name is Rachel Miner and I teach the upper elementary class. And uh, I don't remember how many years I've been is this, doing is this Is this gonna be your sixth? I think it might be the sixth. Mm -hmm. And then before that, I did like, I audited like the high school classes and my son did, I think all the lower elementary and then all the upper elementary and maybe part of the junior high. So it's, it's been a while. <laughs> um, and yeah, really looking forward to uh, the upcoming year and chatting about what we have done so far this year. Cool, thanks, Rachel. And Tonya. This is, I guess, your second year. Was it your? Is this was this your second year of literature at our house? This is my second year with literature at our house. Yes. So my name is Tonya. I met Luke probably fifteen years ago, somewhere around there, and he came to watch me teach the lower elementary students. And I remember the book he was using at the time was, let's see, Caddy. Caddy Woodlawn. Woodlawn. Oh, I remember yes. that. Yes. So I've been. Uh, doing all kinds of different things related to education. I took a few years off when my boys were done with the high school level and now I'm back into it. And it's just really neat to be back with people I, I, I know and we, we used to work together way back when and we're back working together again. So it's just a lot of fun. All right, thank you, Tonya. Oh, okay. should I say yep. that I'm, okay, I'm the one who teaches the lower elementary literature the lower elementary writing and the upper elementary writing. All right, so um, I'm going to go through real quick. We're going to talk a little bit about some of the, the highlights and some of the books and some of the things we did this past year, looking back. And then um, uh, as we're going along, if you have questions, uh, feel free to either jump in or to type those questions in a chat. I see Mona is especially interested in learning about the lower elementary literature plans for next year. And so we'll definitely um, be talking all about that and if we don't hit on everything you you need to know we will um we'll uh we'll address more of that um so i want to start off by talking a little bit about the elementary art appreciation and uh just want to share one quick anecdote uh that i find found really enjoyable i shared this painting with the elementary students and so this is like all elementary from first through sixth grade and uh there's a certain kind of 
uh, routine that we have for art appreciation and the elementary students are starting to get it. I usually start off class with a little personal story where I, I share something meaningful about me and then say, forget about it and let's go look at this painting. And so we, I told a story and then we looked at this painting and, uh, and we saw this girl who's like thrown aside her doll and now is doing some makeup and trying to um, look like this movie star in this, in this magazine she's got. And so this is a, a kind of transition in life from, from one phase of interest to another phase of interest as you grow and mature. And then at this moment, the students were starting to pick it up and say, Mr. Travers, Mr. Travers, that's just like what you were saying about your soccer idol, Michel Platini, and you, how you stopped playing with Transformers and how you started uh, watching Michel Platini's soccer and trying to make his moves. And I said, no, no, how can that be? How can that be? This is all about soccer. And this one's all about, uh, you know, movie stars and makeup it has nothing to do with one another. And the kids kept insisting on the connection between me as this boy who was starting to play soccer and this girl who um, has makeup and, and combs and so forth. And so that kind of integration, looking beyond just the superficial story, but finding the, the abstract links is something that we would keep doing as part of enjoying art appreciation, making personal connections. Um, the next thing I want to share with you is real quick, the junior high art appreciation. Um, and these are a bunch of artworks, but these are not artworks that I selected. Um, actually, we just wrapped up some presentations. These are paintings that were presented by the junior high students where they did readings and uh, background stories for these artworks. And, and this was, these are, this, I think the second presentations uh, that they've done, and they're going to do at least two more. And I, I, you know, this is a little bit of a transition in this year. I wasn't expecting so many presentations, but a couple months ago when I said, all right, uh, you're going to have your first presentation, I got a response I wasn't expecting. It's like, yes. And so I said, all right, here, here are the artists, go find an artwork and uh, come back with presentations. And the students have so much enjoyed hearing each other's uh, artworks, their take on the artworks, how they how they connect to them, and we're building over time each of these presentations to add more to them. And so that's where I will stop. And then I'm going to hand it over now to Tonya to share a little bit about the lower elementary literature from this past year and the, uh, the writing workshop. Thank you, Okay, so looking back at the lower elementary class that I had this year, I just really enjoyed sharing all these wonderful stories. Some of them were full of adventure with heroes and powerful gods and monsters. And um, it was just so dynamic. And um, let me find my notes real quick here, okay. and. So I just really enjoyed, and we went into other stories that related to friendships. We were, went to, we went into stories about slavery. Um, we also went into stories about music and fame. Um, and we're currently in a story about an unknown love. And we, I just really enjoyed all the discussions that we had, such as uh, what could have Odysseus done differently? Was he at the mercy of the gods? What does it mean to be immortal? Why did Odysseus refuse the option to become immortal? Because when time is of an, uh, when there's, when time doesn't matter to the god, they don't care about aging. They don't care. They don't really have the same kind of love that humans have. So it's just so fascinating to have these kind of discussions. Um, what is kind of a leader? Is Eric the Viking? What kind of, what does it mean to be a good leader? Would he ever leave his comrades behind? What is the right thing to do? Are we ever confused like they are sometimes? It's, and um, what is kind of a leader? Oh, what kind of a leader is the child king in the Korean story? How do the brothers, the Korean brothers help the, child king learn how to play without violating all those codes that will get them into trouble. 
lots of interesting discussions. Um, how does a Roman boy save a slave's life? Why does he do this? Why is it important to him? Um, let me go on and give you sort of a, an example of a recent discussion I had with the students. The discussion was based on the trumpet of the swan, which is what we're reading right now. We got to the point of the story where Lewis, he's the young swan who can't speak. He takes a year and a half to go to school to learn to read and write. He comes back to his family and he finds out that even though he can write, no one can understand him because they can't read. Hmm, this is kind of a kind of a problem. And he's fallen in love with a young lady swan who doesn't know it. He can't get her attention. So I asked the students what this might be like. And so one of them shares the story that, oh, when I went to another country and everyone spoke a different language, I couldn't understand what anybody was saying. It was so weird. And another child mentioned, oh, you know what? Lewis is like Echo from the Greek myths. Neither of them can say, I love you. It's so sad. And then, well, what do you think is gonna happen next? We know that the father's gonna help his son. What do you think is gonna happen? So we have this little discussion about, well, maybe Lewis will ask his father to help. Maybe he will use his father's voice to tell Serena, I love you. Oh, is that gonna work? Will it not work? So now the children are learning what really happened in the story. So we'll be, we will be discussing that on Friday and continue that discussion. So that gives you a little window of just sort of, I just love the, the books are so engaging, the stories and the characters are so much fun to read and the discussions. That's what I really enjoy, is to highlight or having the discussions with the, with the children and, making, and watching them make those connections. I see a hand up. Are we gonna do questions now? Yeah, go ahead. Luke? Hi, Tanya, uh, this is Garo. Uh, and I, I I loved what you uh, what you were talking about. Uh, I had a question uh, specifically about uh, uh, lower elementary, and I did ask a little bit from Luke. Also, I reached out to him on email. Uh, my daughter is going from third to fourth grade, so uh, she hasn't done she hasn't been taking any of these classes before. So if she does not take the classes this year because she has missed most of them, and I was thinking that she can listen to the recordings and maybe that will help her to catch up. What do you think, like, is this, would this be a good idea for her to do the, uh, go over the recordings, even though they are recording, they're not live. This year, like in the, uh, in the summer vacation, uh, and then next year join the class, a live class. Or, it, or would you say that it, it's, it's all right if she cannot do it this year, but she can do it next year? Oh yeah, she can join, she can join in any time. We have some, sometimes we have children join in mid-year, so um, there's, so are you concerned about making up time? Yes, uh, 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 because she she does go to a school, uh, so she has a routine and everything. So in that sense, uh, she, it would be hard for her to kind of fit the schedule, but that is for us to kind of figure out how we can do that. But my more uh, uh, the concern was because in a, in the typical school here, the kind of uh, the books that I'm seeing, they don't read these kind of books. Uh, the books oh, they are reading okay. are like the most boring books that you can ever, you know, like, you know, uh, and when, when she says, I don't get it, and I I, th I don't get it. So uh, like it's uh, sometimes, uh, the, though the teachers try hard, but so to get into this kind of reading, which is more, you know, uh, uh, the fiction is making sense and there's a story of characters and all of that. She has not done a lot of it. We do it at home, we read at home, but not as much. So I was thinking, will, he, will she be able to catch up next year? So should this year, she should listen I, to the recordings. So to, you know, kind of make up for the lost time. I think it's fine for, I, I don't, I wouldn't worry about catching up. Okay. I don't think that's really necessary. Um, we have children that come in mid-year for whatever reason, and they just join in with wherever they are. Um, maybe they can't make those connections with the stories that were already discussed beforehand, but they can make connections regardless. Okay. With, they can still connect with the stories and the characters that they're currently reading and mm -hmm. make their own examples to their own lives. So it certainly works that way as well. Okay. So, so I, I, I don't want to, I wouldn't want a young child to feel like they're behind, that they come in. I would, I would work at making them feel welcome. 
okay. you know, making them feel um, open to asking questions, making them feel um, that we're a very supportive environment. We're very friendly. We're very, um, uh, flexible. Okay. So, so that's the, that's what this, that's what I just want to let you know. That's what I, that's, I just want to put out that very genuine, loving, supportive, um, environment comes first and foremost, getting that trust with the child. So they feel comfortable being in the classroom. That's great. Doing that's great. It. I think that's so great. I feel much better about it. Okay. Thank you. Good. Thank good. You. Yeah. Thank you. Tony, do you want to share a little bit about the lower elementary writing workshop? The writing workshop. Okay. So yeah. it was a lot of fun talking about the writing. Uh, let me find my notes again. I'm sorry. I have a think a little bit backwards. Looking back at the lower elementary writing workshop, we focused primarily um, on three kinds of writing. So let me just before I go any further, the writing workshop is an optional class that I teach once a week. I do offer guidance and help with some light, some writing assignments for literature. The workshop just allows me to have more time with the students to kind of talk things through, to be more of a guide, to share ideas, to take notes. So they're a little bit more able to do the homework at home when I send home the notes or they have more, more of it done before they do the rest on their own. So the primary kinds of assignments we did were poetry, uh, paragraphs, and stories. So just give you a quick example. Early on in the year, we memorized a very short poem by Victor Hugo called Be Like the Bird, and everybody memorized it and then wrote their own version of that poem, like be like the bear, be like the loon, or whatever animal it was that they chose to write about. Uh, when it comes to writing paragraphs, I always have children write a paragraph that answers some kind of question that they find interesting. So the questions that they wrote paragraphs for was like, what kind of a place is Hades from the Odyssey story? The other one was, what does the slave need to recover? So I mentioned that there's one story about a slave and the boy saving him. He needed to recover both physically and spiritually. So that was a really nice discussion and they were able to write a little paragraph about that. The other kinds of things they like to write um, are the stories. And the stories are, these are all um, inspired by our literature. So they wrote an odyssey story. They had to come up with a monster and some kind of power and how with Odysseus gonna defeat it. And after everybody wrote the stories, I read those stories. And after I read each of those stories, the kids cheered and clapped. It was just so much fun. We did the same thing with the Viking stories that we read. Oh, the Viking story's not on here. Okay, so we did read a Viking story that's not on the, on the screen. Um, so that kind of gives you an idea of what um, the kind of writing assignments I do with the younger students in the lower elementary class. Thanks, Tonya. Um, and right before I hand it over to Rachel to talk about the, um, the upper elementary, um, I want to indicate that if even if your child is not currently in lower elementary grade and so forth, and you're listening to some of the things that they're doing um, that Mrs. Fingerhut is doing or Mrs. Miner is doing, we have discussions. Uh, constantly as, as a team about our approach. And so the kinds of assignments that you hear going on in lower elementary are also very similar to the kinds of assignments and the pedagogical approach that we have in the high school class. Um, so just, just for you, if you're with a high school student, you, maybe you get a sense of, of the consistency throughout the program and some of the, uh, the ideas that we have. So Rachel, let me hand it over now to you for uh, the fun you had with the upper elementary literature. I did, I did. So looking back um, on our upper elementary year so far, um, we started with Golden Goblet, um, which is a really wonderful um, book for putting, putting yourself in a completely different culture. Um, and students originally um, took a little bit of time to like picture okay so so the main character is really worried about kefs and it's like what are kefs what what what, what is this stuff and like he needs an amulet for this and he's worried about it. a lot of the um 
beginning is about gaining uh, an appreciation for being dumped into a completely different culture. Um, and there are also a lot of very um, endearing characters that we bring throughout, right? So we read the Greek myths and there's a lot of different connections, right? So the Greek myths are a lot of, a lot of individual shorter stories. Um, and we read Anna of Byzantium, um, which was the first one of our stories uh, where you know, you know the end at the beginning. Um, and we had a lot of discussion about that, right? Like, are you happy about this? Because you know already that this is what's gonna happen in this book. And as they read through it, they decided that they liked it more and more because they had to figure out how do we wind up there from where we are now? Um, again, some very, very engaging characters. And also um, we do awards. Um, we could do awards at the end of like the best villain and the best hero and the funniest and the person who you'd most like to hang out with. So far, the um, one of the um, characters in Anna of Byzantium keeps, keeps winning for the worst villain, one of these people you love to hate. Um, and students get very intense about the uh, about the characters that are like, no, 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 that's the worst one. No, 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 you know, and they, they'll discuss with each other and try to persuade each other to, you know, the various points of view, which is of course really, really engaging and really fun. Um, we read Where the Red Fern Grows, um, which is another one where you know the ending at the beginning, which they decided again that they really liked. Um, it's one where they were really able to um, gain a great deal of appreciation for a main character who has to work very hard over a very long period of time to achieve the goal that he wants. And um, they, they, they kept coming back to that throughout. Um, and you know, it's, it's, a, it's definitely an inspirational um, novel. Uh, we read The First Two Lives of Lucas Casho, which very often gets the favorite book award. We shall see what wins this year. Um, it's very, very um, uh, engaging. Lots of adventure things are changing from, you know, really, really rapidly. But what seemed to engage students the most and what they loved the most was the comparison between these two main characters and how they approach getting people to their point of view so differently. One of them is very kind of like, you go in with the sword all blazing, you know, whether it's the verbal sword or the physical sword, you just, you know, you, you attack. Um, and another one of them is very, um, very good at being persuasive and convincing people that they want to do what he wants them to do. And they loved it. And they started, you know, there's a whole scene about how this character convinces um, groups of people that they want to be considered goats and camels. Instead of considering it an insult, they, it's going to be considered a compliment. And for weeks, they kept naming themselves goats and camels throughout class. And they were having the grandest time because they thought it was so cool. Um, the Winslow Boy, you know, our first play. As far as assignments, they, um, we usually develop the writing assignments throughout um, the class instead of like, you know, just here's the prompt and go write. A lot of times we'll develop them. And for the Winslow boy, students really, really wanted to write another scene. And I was like, oh, okay, I'm, I'm good with that. And I'm like, yeah, so try and write, you know, like around a page or two of dialogue. And many of them wrote like five pages because they were so excited about it. And they're like, it's gonna be really, really fun. Um, and now we're, we're into, I've just started A Little Princess, which um, we, I, uh, I've particularly enjoyed some of the, the banter. Um, there's a lot of playfulness in this class. And you know, I got a lot of pushback when we were starting this, like you're gonna have us read something called A Little Princess. And I was hearing all about how this better be exciting and about how, um, you know, they don't want any warm fuzzies, you know, because I really like these books of adventure. So I, uh, I, I'm not worried that the book will win them over. Um, and I love the, the really, 
the really fun, playful, engaging atmosphere that we have as we as we encounter each of these books, each of these characters, how we enjoy enjoy the fun ones, how we commiserate with how awful the bad ones are, and how we engage throughout. Rachel, I'm glad you brought up that the the resistance, uh, which uh, your confident is initial resistance to the little princess, and I think that's that's one of the values that we bring is that we we have this great literature that we know children love and that that a child might not normally pick up uh, on their own. Um, and Rachel, you also mentioned the um, the one of the, the assignments that you do in developing the writing assignments. Now, all the literature classes have writing assignments. And as Tonya mentioned, the writing workshops are in addition to that. Now, Tonya, you're doing the writing workshop for the upper elementary. So how did that work with uh, with Rachel and her students that you had in a separate session for writing? So I function as her support. So anytime the writing prompts are expected, we just stop whatever we're doing and the children just take time to decide what prompt they wanna do and we just talk about it. If they wanna spend their time in writing workshop just writing, they're free to do so. If they wanna spend their time in writing workshop talking about it and coming up with some kind of plan to write for later, that's what we do. So I would have to say the writing workshop is um, what I have found about the students in this particular class. They are so enthusiastic about writing. And I think they dearly appreciate having all of the opportunities to do, you know, I, want, I get to pick which writing prompt to respond to or invent one that fits as long as it fits. And, and Ms. Rachel said it's okay. Now, because they're so productive, we have time to do other assignments that they are really interested in. And it was just a lot of fun to see what these children wanted to do. They started with, oh, it's Halloween. Let's write a scary story. So they did. And, oh, Christmas is coming. Let's do an adventurous Christmas story. So they did that. Oh, let's do a sadly ever after story. Oh, wow. They came up with some really sad, sad stories. Um, then they kind of wanted to go big. They went to like three and five chapter stories. One group decided, oh, let's make this a group effort. Let's make this a detective story. Let's create the agent. You create an agent, I'll create an agent, you create an agent, and then we'll write stories where they work together to solve world crime. And another group decided, well, we're gonna write about a story that takes place in another world. And so I, I'm seeing there's a real need for these children to explore and to test and to see what they can do. Because at the end, sometimes I hear the students say, I didn't know I could write like this. And it's just really interesting to hear that because after they hear their stories being read by another person, and after they hear other people give insight to what they think is meaningful, their story shows them something else, something new that they probably didn't realize was our, that was there. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. I think stories are so important for, for children to write. Um, and sometimes they choose to write uh, nonfiction and that's their, I'm there as a support uh, to let them develop in the way they would like. And to see their enthusiasm, it's just wonderful to see. And their output has just been amazing, so. Thank you, Tonya. Thank you, Rachel. Okay, I'm gonna quickly breeze through uh, junior high literature um, and the writing workshop. So uh, this being the ancient uh, year, we uh, spent some time with mythology and then read the Odyssey, uh, read Sophocles Antigone play. Um, and we also were reading some things that were kinda connected to um, to ancient literature. Now, when when we have like the ancient literature year and next year is going to be the European literature year, the primary selection is is not we've got to make sure it's in that that section of history. No, primary uh, standard for selection is whether we think it's something that the kids are going to love. Um, and then we we kind of arrange it a little bit. So this was an interesting one, the Browning version, uh, which is uh, a, a play set in England in the, in the 20th century, 
but it draws from the uh, the conflict between Agamemnon and Clytemnestra and, uh, and, uh, and the tragedy of that story that the students had read all about in mythology. So it was building up. Um, and then we read this play Philoctetes, which is not a well-known Sophocles play, but I think is probably one of the most relatable ancient Greek plays that I've found for junior high and high school students, because it's about a choice between seeking glory or being moral. Uh, and does one come at the expense of the other? And one of the fascinating things that turned up is we'd read the Odyssey, where we saw Odysseus being a great hero, struggling to get back home. Then we read the, um, the Tennyson poem, Oh, I've got somebody coming in. Let will let them in. We read the Tennyson poem. Um, oh, what's it called? Somebody help me. My my brain is terrible. Uh, Ulysses. That's it. <laughs> Ulysses, where he is again now an older person who wants to get away from home and go off on adventures, whereas in the Odyssey he is trying to get home uh, away from his adventures. And so two different personalities. And then we go into Philoctetes where Odysseus appears again. And it just surprised the students to find out, a slight spoiler, that Odysseus is a villain in this play. So we were exploring the same character through three different authors' interpretations of how he's going to be uh, portrayed. Um, currently, we are finishing up with Victor Hugo's 93, um, an epic story of... Um, of devotion to what matters most to you, from a mother to a general. And then um, the next thing that we're gonna read, and we might finish up the year, uh, we might have a little bit more time, with uh, Pygmalion, of course, based on the myth, um, Pygmalion and Galatea. So that's a little bit of the junior high. And the high school, uh, which I think this is the first year I started calling it a seminar. Um, and I, I call it that because I wanted to stress the fact that the students were participating in developing content for the course as much as possible. And in doing that, we've set aside uh, so far two weeks where we don't have classes, but we have private tutorial sessions. And out of those came um, most recently um, some poetry presentations that the students, they picked from some ancient poets. I think a lot of them went for Horace and a lot of them went for Li Bai, the Chinese ancient poet, and um, shared poetry that they found from those authors and connected it to the literature that we've done this year. And I'll just name the books because sometimes the type is small there. So we've got Frankenstein, uh, also known as the new Prometheus. Uh, and then after Frankenstein, we read Prometheus Bound. So we got two different Prometheuses and compared it and contrasted them a little bit. Then we went to the Iliad. Um, and you know what we figured out? It's actually a story about love. Uh, <laughs> Okay, well, you'll have to you'll have to ask your your child if they're in a high school class to see how we came to that conclusion. Um, and we spent a time with crime and punishment, and this was I this is this was this was a tough one. This was a tough one. Some students really got into it. Some it was a little bit more challenging, but uh, that was our big mega novel for the year. Uh, we recently finished reading uh, Euripides' Medea. And now we're on Modamana and reading that together in class, um, uh, a love story in war. And uh, got these four over here, I've got as the uh, next batch of possibilities that we're gonna be reading for the rest of the year. Uh, one is a uh, uh, Gunnar's Daughter, which is a, a Viking story told from the perspective of a woman living in the barbarian male dominated world of the Vikings. And, um, then we're going to maybe go back to 5,000 years ago and take a look at the Epic of Gilgamesh, where so many story tropes come from the hero's quest and all that. Um, and I've got two more here that we might get to, Ayn Rand's Anthem, um, which is also kind of connected to the Prometheus myth and um, a play by Sophocles Ajax. So that's a little bit of what we did this past year. Now. Uh, I'll take a little bit of a breath, see if there are any questions and um, right now to discuss, and then we will talk about what is coming up ahead for next year. I'm taking a breath. I'm going to take a sip of my uh, evening coffee. I'm in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is like 9.30 p.m. right now. So 
Oh, by the way, do you like my Ted Lasso mug? If anybody likes Ted Lasso, uh, yeah. Good. Uh, thank you, Carrie Ann. Okay. Uh, did I talk about the format for junior high? Oh, yeah, thanks, Sarah. So format for junior high is indeed three times a week, like the upper elementary. The format for the, uh, the high school is twice a week. Um, okay, so let's look ahead and, and we can talk a little bit about that more um, after we go through if you still have more questions about that, Sarah. So uh, looking ahead, I'm not gonna talk about the art appreciation because it's gonna be pretty much the same thing. There will be an elementary art appreciation same time, same place, Fridays, 3 p.m. Eastern. Uh, and there will be a junior high art appreciation um, time of that TBD. So I wanna share now back to Tonya to share what she has in store for the lower elementary literature. Okay, so I think this is going to be a really interesting time period to, to talk about, there's going to be stories with uh, kings and dragons and Vikings. And um, so it's just going to be very dynamic. I have the idea of using medieval, favorite medieval tales by Mary Pope Osborne. I enjoy that book. It might be a, a little slim for what I'm looking for, but I'm using this book as a, I want to say like a spine. And I'm keeping my eye out for a version of Robin Hood, maybe one, a version of King Arthur to include in the book list. I just put the two in here. I haven't read these yet, um, but I'm really looking forward to delving into the medieval stories, which is, the, I'm just very fond of, of the medieval literature in general. Um, I like the songs that came out of this time period. I like the poetry that came out of this time period. So I may be bringing some of those in as well. The Tale of Despero, I have not read, but I've heard wonderful things about it. And I am excited about this story regarding someone who's so helpless, who still finds a way to find hope. The story of the door in the wall, I remember reading this in college for the first time. <laughs> it's just a really wonderful story about a boy who ends up being an orphan and he's adopted by a friar and his relationship with the friar and he ends up being crippled as well. And how, and they, the, the castle comes under attack. So what does he do in regards to helping the king and saving the people? And I can imagine that the discussion will be one of the questions I know I want to ask the students is what does it mean to find a door in the wall? It's kind of interesting. Um, so there's so many things to say about King Arthur and Robin Hood. Uh, what does it mean to be a king? What does it mean? Um, what is, who is Robin Hood? Why is he a hero? Is he a thief or a hero? What does it mean? So just kind of getting some, some information about um, some very well-known characters from this time period will be interesting. Abel's Island, a story about a mouse who gets separated from his wife through a terrible storm. And so he sort of has his own odyssey. How does he deal with the isolation? How does he try to rebuild? himself? How does he try to get out of the situation he's in? And how does he find his way home? So um, it's a very endearing story that I, uh, I really like. Pigs might fly. Now this one is going to be, this one has a lot of humor. The spirit of the main character in the story, the little pig, is just so benevolent and just so delightful. And there's a misunderstanding about what it means when he hears the expression, when pigs fly, and he takes on this idea, oh, pigs can fly. He doesn't realize that it's an expression that that's impossible. So it's kind of a story about how to make the impossible possible. It's just really kind of fun. And yet there's some dark sides, some dark hard moments in this story as well. Now, I wanna end the year with this amazing story. I love 
Black beauty. And I have loathed seeing the reaction of students when they read the story. They love getting to know him, his friends, and through the eyes of Black beauty, they learn about man. They have sort of a landscape around them about what men, um, I guess men and women, what people are like. And over the years, what happens to Black beauty over the years, it's just a really, um, I wanna say timeless story that I've seen children just really hang on to and they just love it. I could spend a little more time just talking about the, the writing program. Should I go ahead and do that now, Luke? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so it's gonna be very similar to what I've done last year. We'll find inspiration through the works that we read for poetry or for paragraphs or finding stories. Um, I may bring in some things like, um, you know, Saxons had a fun way of writing riddles that might be kind of fun to try for a writing assignment. I might do that with the older elementary too. It might be kind of fun to bring in some of those elements that are in the medieval literature and try them out. So we'll see what I go with that. But that's generally what I described earlier with the lower elementary writing will be this uh, true with next year as well. Okay, that's all I have. Thank you, Tonya. All right, so for the upper elementary for next year, Rachel. Yes, um, some super, super, um, adventure focus books. So starting off um, usually with the book of three, um, students fall in love with this main character, Taryn, who is very, very impetuous and they have such a good time. Like at, on one hand, identifying in that, well, perhaps in some points in time, they might have been impetuous themselves, but they have a really, really good time with noticing um, when he is being impetuous, when it's not perhaps the best choice. And again and again, we have examples in this book where he comes across similar situations and over the course of the book, he responds differently. So it's a really, really powerful book for seeing a character grow in a way that students can identify with. Um, and there, there are timeless characters in this book. Um, I mean, we, we have kids that will not stop, you know, it's, it's all about the crunchings and munchings and they, everything else becomes ings and ings and they just have so much fun <laughs> with some of the characters. Um, Next, uh, stories of King Arthur's knights, similar to like how we do the Greek myths or did the Greek myths this past year. We go through the, the tales um, of King Arthur's knights. They, they get to experience this kind of episodic nature at the same time they're in the same universe. And <laughs> you made me laugh, Luke. <laughs> um, and so, they, they get to, to find their favorites. Um, and just like when we were going through the Greek um, myths, they, they started to get their kind of like themes of like, you know, don't let the gods take pity on you because you're gonna wind up a rock or a tree. Um, you know, they get their themes of like, all right, it's time for real chivalry. What's gonna happen next <laughs> in their, their tales of King Arthur. Um, Hatchet is one of, um, is a much more mature story um, about a, a boy who, who finds himself um, needing to survive in a situation that is, uh, that really requires him to grow. And he, this is another story where we see him grow over time in a really, really powerful way. Um, and from the mixed up files of Mrs. Basil E. Frankweiler, we, we almost always use the first letters. Um, so they, they start to abbreviate all the books too. Um, they, uh, this story really um, has a playful kind of start. And it's one of those books where 
the students seem to really have it all figured out. And then it takes a turn of like where the book they think is going is, is not accurate and it changes. Um, absolutely. <laughs> and um, we also might, you know, the to be decided, we also might add, there's a book um, about Queen Eleanor that we've often used. That's a bit of a mix. That's like part novel and a little bit of a history and it like or narrative kind of piece. It's kind of interesting that we often have in. Um, we, we, we like to finish the year with The Secret Garden. Um, it is a well-deserved classic. Um, students get to see several characters grow and grow together. Um, and it is so powerful and so inspirational um, that, uh, yeah, it, it, is, it is often the kind of crowning delight of the year. So I am completely looking forward to this. We, you know, create our own, again, writing assignments that really match um, what each particular class is, is working on. Because um, sometimes our classes have, you know, different interests and they're, they're unique. They always are, right? And so we are very much tailoring to what's going to be interesting for that group of students. Um, and they're, you know, creating your own Arthurian legend is, is, you know, one of those like great fun things, but there's um, many, many um, delights in sharing that these kind of stories bring up. Thank you, Rachel. Absolutely. All right. Um, so we're, we're a few minutes over, um, but if it's all right with y'all, I'll, I'll keep going. I'm not going to put a hard stop on it. I'll share with you what I've got for the junior high. Um, and uh, I'll try to keep it brief and then have a little bit of time um, for EO, uh, uh, for questions and so forth and talk a little bit about the schedule. Oh, and I see, I see kids. Oh, hello, hello, hello. I see Ariana. I see Midas. I see Serenity. Hey. Okay, so um, junior high literature for next year, uh, the European history year of the junior high. And I think I've got these kind of in order. No, 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 I don't. Um, first up, we're going to start. It's European history. So we're going to start with an American classic, The Miracle Worker. Um, uh, one of my favorite plays to read. And um, and do not show up the first, the, the last day of class for The Miracle Worker because I will not be crying while we read it at the end. I will not be. Um, anybody been to Alabama to, to see the actual pump? Where? Okay, okay. I, I still need to make a pilgrimage there. So the Miracle Worker, um, what else do I have on here? Uh, Beowulf, a retelling of Beowulf, which is uh, um, a novelized version, not the old English one, um, but a really powerful one. And, and David's if you're there, David O'Brien, you're the one who directed me to that many, many years ago. Um, we've got 12 Angry Men on here, even better than the movie. Uh, and it's one of the students' favorites because it's all about justice and junior high students care a lot about justice. Um, we've got Cyrano de Bergerac. We've got the heroism. We've got the love, things that they're starting to, well, the love is the thing that they're starting to kind of ask about and wonder about. And actually that makes up a big part of a lot of the books because Victor Hugo's uh, The Hunchback of Notre Dame, it is about different kinds of romantic love and, uh, and the errors you can make with romantic love. And it's such a powerful story. It's one that's, I described like a roller coaster. It's like a little bit hard to, you got it, so many characters, what the heck's going on? You've got slow going. And when you get to a certain peak, it's a downhill ride and a zooming all the way. Um, it's one of my favorites to teach for any class anywhere and one that students love. Uh, Scarlet Pimpernel, we have in there. Uh, just so much fun, heroism. Uh, it's, it's, this is almost like candy um, and a love story. And then I've got uh, a doll's house in here, um, which is one that I love to teach to junior high, especially junior high boys. When I say to everybody, okay, now we're going to read a play about a housewife in the late 19th century. And everybody's going to be able to connect to her because it's a play about questioning the, the structure and values that you have been born into and being okay with, with, with having some skepticism and realizing that 
a lot of who you are comes from someone else and then figuring out who you want to be. Um, haven't they read The Doll's House last year? I think I might've had it on the list. Sometimes, you know, Mariana, I no, they, they didn't read it this, this past year. I don't remember. I, I've got it on the list. Sometimes there's The Doll's House and An Enemy of the People or the two Ibsen plays that I do in the junior high class. So whichever one, I'm pretty sure, but sometimes I switch them up. So you it could be, but I, I'm pretty sure it's, a, uh, I'll have a doll's house next up, but I might be wrong. Um, now, high school. Okay, so um, start off the year with Jane Eyre. Um, and it's, it's a little bit like the follow-up to a doll's house. Um, discovering independence in yourself and making your own choices in life. Uh, such a powerful and beloved story. Other one, now here I've got a mixture of those that I know that we're going to do and some that um, I'm still I'm experimenting with. The high school classes, as I've, as I've mentioned before, is, is for me the most experimental one where all the, the junior high I've taught for 15 years. High school, this is my fifth year now teaching high school and we try things out and see what happens. Some that I know that we're going to do we're going to definitely going to read some Tolstoy, Family Happiness. We're very likely going to read Othello. Um, Wild Duck, another Ibsen play. Um, okay, I want to say more, but I, I know I, I, if I get into it, I'll, I'll, we're, I'm going to just push the clock. If anybody wants to ask, wants to ask me about any in particular, just let me know. Wild Duck, Ibsen play. Uh, Victor Hugo novel that I've done before, The Man Who Lasts, but I, I might not do it. We'll see. Um, that would be one that we might switch up. Um, St. Joan, um, that's a wonderful play by George Bernard Shaw and the, um, got Charles Dickens, A Tale of Two Cities. And the one that might be the big question, if we did, uh, The Count of Monte Cristo, that's a huge tome, but it's one I taught before and it is beloved, but it took us like two and a half months. So if we did The Count of Monte Cristo, we probably wouldn't do, uh, The Man Who Laughs, um, because we'll keep like one big novel. Uh, which we'll have time for. And I've got a few others here that are possibilities. Don Carlos by Friedrich Schiller, Anna Karenina, if we don't do Family Happiness. Maybe Romeo and Juliet, um, The Seed by Pierre Cornet. So that's just a brief little snippet. And it's going to be seminar style again, where we're going to have three big presentations, three weeks where we're doing tutorials instead of uh, you know, private tutorials instead of classes and doing as much as possible to have the students lead the discussions. Uh, rather than me. So I want to pause right here uh, before I talk a little bit about the schedule and some logistics for registration and all that. I want to ask if there are any questions for any of us about anything, the books, the classes, the structure, anything you have in your mind right now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, Shoshana, thanks for bringing that up. So um, the, the, diff, the junior high literature class um, has, has writing, but then there's an additional writing workshop with the junior high literature class, just like the upper elementary and, and lower elementary. Um, so Shoshana's just asking this question. Um, and the high school class does not have a writing workshop associated with it. It's a twice a week, more independent, uh, like 50 pages of reading between classes and more expectation for doing writing on their own. Um, so there, there isn't the same kind of support. Uh, the support that does come is in that, that is built into the seminar is during those tutorial sessions of private tutorial sessions that I have right now slated for three times uh, a year. Uh, but I do uh, continuously offer feedback whenever a student needs it. And, um, and of course, I, I am open to, to helping out with any kind of tutoring or anything like that. Um, and that's actually something I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, one thing with the, the high school, I know there are, I've got a, a couple of high school students who might not be able to make it to this, or they're, they've already read this set of books. I, I will probably be offering some kind of uh, private high school tutorials uh, for any older high school students who want to keep 
for whatever reason, reading with me um, and uh, continuing a little bit of maybe small group or, or discussions about books that they pick out. Okay, so thanks for that question, Shoshana. Um, anything more? Okay, I wanna go to the schedule now. And we've got some things to figure out for the schedule and some things we're still uh, working on, but I will point out the things that we know and the things that we're still figuring out. So lower elementary literature, same time, same place, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific. Lower elementary writing workshop, to be determined. Upper elementary literature, same time, same place, under the Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 2 p.m. Eastern, 11 a.m. Pacific. Writing workshop, to be determined. Elementary art appreciation, same time, Fridays, 3 p.m. Eastern, 12 p.m. Pacific. Junior high literature, same time, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. The junior high writing workshop, junior high art appreciation, basically to be determined. The high school literature seminar, kind of to be determined. The 3 p.m. time this past year has worked well, and that's probably what we will stick with. Um, but because we have a little bit smaller group there, uh, I wanna make sure that that's going to work for everybody. So that's probably the time that we'll have the 3 p.m. Tuesday, Thursday, but I will be confirming that with returning parents and then we're gonna um, open it up to new. Uh, and then I've got high school literature two year olds, which note that's any time. Um, a few important next steps. So the first big next step is figuring out placement for current students. Uh, and there, there is some, I, I, I have some ideas, we have some ideas of where we might say your child is should go and you have some ideas. So what I would like to do is have a little bit of a dialogue with each of you about where you're thinking your child uh, should be placed. For general reference, the high, high school is about 10th through 12th grade. The junior high is about seventh through ninth grade. The upper elementary is about fourth through sixth and the lower elementary, second, third, and maybe fourth. And one thing that we're seeing is maybe for the lower elementary and upper elementary, we might have a lot of sixth graders and then a lot of fourth graders. So one thing that we're thinking about maybe is having the lower elementary kind of extend up into fourth grade and because the upper elementary might be skewed towards sixth grade. So that's something that we don't know yet that we would like to figure out where your, your child might be placed, what um, after having seen the book selections, after having spent the time this year, uh, we will, we're, we're flexible about how we're gonna approach it, but what we're gonna do is figure out the best way to combine the students together um, for the coming year. So that will be in the coming days, uh, we can talk a little bit, have email exchanges about where your child might be placed for current students. Then we're gonna have registration for current families next week. Next week and going into the following week. And so um, there will be, current families will have a small, a little bit of a discount on the rate. Now the, the, the registration fee and the subscription, monthly subscription is gonna go up for next year for everyone, but it will be still a little bit less for returning families. And you'll get first serve so you can make sure you get into um, the classes that you want. And then registration will open to all on April 20th. Okay. I'm taking a breath. Thoughts and questions? Oh, good question. I haven't considered that, Kathy. Um, I think my, um, I don't remember how I did it last year. Uh, I, I think, 
my, my immediate answer is this, that you've got the window to register at the discounted rate and then, and then it goes up for everybody. It's like, cause I, I'm not gonna have two separate rates on the, on the website. I think that's, that's my answer. So after, after the 19th, it, it will go up. Uh, when does the next session start? Is it uh, the week after, what's that holiday in early September? Is that uh, Labor Day? The week after Labor Day, so second week of, um, of September. Yeah, and I'll have more precise details on that. Um, and then Kathy, you've got some time. To, yeah, Kathy, you know what? I could work something out. If, if you're saying, hey, Luke, uh, can, can we hold off just a little bit? Oh, we want to come back. I'll, I'll give you, I'm a pushover. I'll give you a discount rate. Um, so yeah, just keep in touch with me. Shoshana, yes. Yes, siblings, sure, absolutely. I see, uh, let's see, I think maybe we're, we're good to go. Uh, unless Tonya, Rachel, do you have any final words of inspiration? Uh, particularly, I'm delighted with um, the class that we've had this year and I'm looking forward to next year. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I'm delighted just to hear the stories that come out of the classroom and then, and then when I'm doing the, uh, the elementary art appreciation, I, I, you know, we get to do connections to the things that they're reading and their class and uh, uh, their literature classes. So I, I get a sneak peek there too. Um, Tonya, any final thoughts, words of wisdom, inspiration, intellectual insight? I, you know, I just had fun. I just thought it was fun reading all the stories with everybody and, and being a part of this group has been really nice. I love the families, I love the kids. I love their writing. That's my inspiration. Well, it's been delightful to have you, Tonya and Rachel, and uh, I, I love doing this. And I, and I think I mentioned this before, but uh, it's this is the 10th anniversary. I can see myself doing this for, for another 10 years. Heck, maybe even 20. Who knows? But it's at the it's at the core of what I do with all my art and literature stuff. And I've got to stay in a classroom in some form. And this is one thing I love to do. Okay, I, I guess I do have one question. Yeah. Since I have so many families in my class from California, and then, you know, is this is the time good? I can be a little more flexible with my schedule. So if anybody feels like it's a little too early or um, please, please let us know what will work best for your family. And, and Tony, I'm going to piggyback on that to, uh, to share also something else. Um, we're going to add a second Zoom account because you can't have two classes going on simultaneously on a single Zoom account, but we're gonna add a second one so that we can be a little bit more flexible with scheduling things. Um, so we can we can do that. Oh, I, why am I forgetting this? I know I forget like three things, uh, but here's one. Um, one thing for uh, returning families, um, we're going to be growing. We've got, you know, we've got spaces to fill. We're going to have space to fill in the lower elementary and the upper elementary and the junior high and the high school. I, I'm even thinking about adding a second high school, a junior high class. I don't know why, but I think I might. But um, one of the primary ways of growing our literature house family is through word of mouth from you. Um, and to encourage that, uh, and this is something I've done in the past, I've done a referral bonus uh, of one month free. So if uh, somebody signs up and they said, oh, you know what? Mona told me all about the literature at our house and loved that our appreciation class. And can we sign up? And then there, one month free of art appreciation or whatever you signed up for. So that maybe that's a little bit of help to tell your friends about it. Um, okay, so I'll, I'll make sure to, to 
clarify that and announce it. Okay, anything more? Luke, how, how do we reach out uh, to, uh, like if I want to have some question for Tanya uh, because my daughter is like lower elementary, if I have some question for that? For yeah, her. Tonya, shall I, shall I give Gorov your email address? I'll do that. I'll do that. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Okay. Uh, and Kathy just want to say how it's wonderful to see the creativity with the writing class uh, with Tonya and her guidance with kids. Thanks for that thought, Kathy. Um, okay. We will see you all sometime. Email us uh, and we'll probably be emailing you too to ask about uh, where you're thinking your child might be placed. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you.